So, hello everyone. I'm Tomáš Ter. I work here in the university and uh, this project was made by uh, with one of my colleagues. And uh, this is about horizontal load resistance of ruined walls uh, because a question raised about the uh, remaining part of a wooden castle, whether it is safe or not, and we are going to investigate this. If I manage to... Explain. Ah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. And the lightsaber. Okay. <laughs> Okay, how did you make it? <laughs> I'm just going to keep with the... Uh, okay. Sorry if there's some problem. No problem. You still have the laser here. Or there. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, uh, we are here in uh, the northern, northern part of Hungary. There is a little village called Matra Derecka. And there is a castle. Um, it once had been a little castle and there was a guarding tower and only just a little part of it remains. And uh, we are going to investigate this, this structure. Okay, so something about, some, some pictures about the castle. So this has been uh, a whole, whole garden tower, uh, guarding the valley. And we know really just a few things about the history of this castle. The history doesn't even know whether it was built in the medieval century or uh, even, even earlier, because no excavations were done even during the last decades. So this is, this is uh, still missing, and some archaeological um, work would result in some new facts and new uh, evidences about this part of our history, which can be interesting. But as you can see, this form is really amorphous. So who would tell uh, whether it is going to stand tomorrow or it is going to just uh, fall down uh, as a result of a big wind or as a result of a small earthquake or something like this. So no excavations were done. And uh, who would tell you that if we go there and start the digging, this whole structure remains standing? Or uh, whether is it irresponsible to, to let people go there to, to make a basket lunch in the shade of this uh, structure? Or, or they just can go there and climb on, it top, uh, on top of it? Well, I haven't said that this is over 15 meter high and uh, still some rocks falling down from it, uh, from their places. So it can be pretty risky, and we do not know how risky is it. So we do not know whether it is safe to dig there, make the excavations, or is it even safe to go there to uh, have a view on the, on the um, land landscape? And we would like to decide this. Uh, and how? How is this going to work? And we have made up uh, a method. We have said that let us take a terrestrial laser scanner, let us grab some books about geometry, some basic mechanics, and some programming languages. And uh, we have a computer, and this is going to work somehow, at least we hope. So, the plan is that based on the data from the terrestrial laser scanner, uh, we can write a code uh, about this, this point cloud, and we ask the computer, please tell us whether this structure is safe or not, or he's going to tell us that it is 42. <laughs> uh, okay. And we have done this. Uh, the, the laser scanning was made by the Mindigish LTD with uh, Gabor Magos. And uh, we have received a clear point cloud. We didn't have to work anything with the point cloud. We just received it pretty clearly. So no, vegeta no vegetation, no birds, nothing. And this has been made by Robert Fülöp. 
Okay, and uh, based on this, we have started to survey the stru structure, and we had some basic assumptions. We have said that this structure to be a rigid body, so it is going to be homogeneous, so there are, there are no invisible hollows in it and no big cracks. This is just an assumption. This was needed for us to, to be able to uh, solve this problem. Uh, this masonry doesn't have any tensile capacity, we have said. Uh, it is made of some mortar and some stone, let us say, and andesit, we have found out to be, which has a pretty big compression strength, but uh, as a masonry, it is just uh, 40 newton per square millimeter, the, the compression strength of the structure. And we would like to examine how is this structure works against its dead load and against the horizontal loads that can happen, so the wind and the earthquake. So we would like to investigate the stability of this structure. Uh, and this is not that important. We have used the coordinate system where the horizontal plane is the x, y, and the vertical axis is the z. Okay. The method was that we, uh, we were given a point cloud and we made sections in each height of it and we have calculated the area of each section and the centroid of each section all along the height of the structure which is going to show us the, the total volume of the structure so under the, under the uh, graph. And we have also uh, based on the volume of the structure, we could tell that, okay, the mass of this building is over 450 tons, okay? And uh, we have also calculated the centroid of each section, which is good for us because we would like to have the projection of the mass of the centroid to the ground at the base. So the eccentricity of the dead load at the base point. So we have summed up all the eccentricities. They are going to cause a moment and a normal force. And uh, that is going to give us the eccentricity. So here the blue dot uh, shows us the centroid of the base section at, at the lowest part. And this is the eccentricity of the dead load. But what do we know? Uh, now, so is this too much or, 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 or just nothing? Uh, are they so close to each other? Or So what can we do? Why is this good for us? Let me show you a simple example. So everyone knows the leaning tower of Pisa. Uh, let us do just the same without laser scanning. So here is the axis of the building. Let's assume that we know the uh, centroid of uh, the center of the mass of the structure, which is going to give us the projection of the centroid of the uh, mass at the base, which is the eccentricity itself, okay? And we have a maximum eccentricity that can happen while if some horrible wind comes or an earthquake happens, the leaning tower of Pisa can overturn and becoming the lying tower of Pisa, uh, not already that beautiful. So this is the method. We are going to set two limit states. The first one, the, the ultimate limit states, is the no overturning limit states. This is going to tell us that uh, we are not allowing the structure that the eccentricity from the loads reaches the convex hull of the structure, because that is going to cause overturning. Right, because the, uh, the stresses, the compressive stresses at the base cannot equal equalize the destabilizing moment anymore. Uh, with knowing the, the worst, the closest point here, so this structure would overturn when the eccentricity reaches this edge of the structure, or the convex hull of the edge of the structure, uh, for which belongs a one and a 1.6 meter distance, uh, and knowing the uh, weight of the structure, 
we can calculate that this should be a 7,300 kilonewton meter destabilizing moment that would cause overturning. And so far, we, I, have, I haven't said anything about the material uh, failure of the structure. This is just a failure of the rigid body that it is going to overturn. So this is going to be our criteria that if we found that the effect uh, exceeds this, this value, then we sadly going to say that the structure is not safe. Okay, the other limit states is uh, a bit stricter. It is said that we would like to have a structure where the whole base section is just under compression. I have said that the basic assumptions that we are not going to have any uh, tension uh, resistance. This means that when the eccentricity exceeds, exceeds a, a limit, then just one part of the structure is going to be under compression, the other part is going to be under tension, and while the structure cannot take up tension, there are going to be cracks in that, in that part, um, assuming elastic stress state. So this region in which the acting force causes just uh, compression within the body at the base section. Uh, it's called the core of, core of the section, and this can be calculated uh, using some uh, mechanical principles, knowing the principal axis and the principal uh, inertias of the section. It is written down in the paper. I'm not going to bore you with this. Uh, so. Here we, we see the core of the section. The eccentricity received from the dead load is still within this uh, region. So the structure is, the whole base section is under compression. So no cracks are going to happen if no wind blows and no earth earthquake happens. So, so far so good. What happens next? We are going to investigate the effect of the horizontal load. Well, the wind can uh, blow from any direction and we would like to find uh, the worst direction. So we just uh, uh, made an algorithm that is going to uh, show us the, the result of the eccentricity. Here the blue dot shows the, the resultant eccentricity based on the dead load plus the wind load. And it is found that uh, this direction is the worst, and based on the wind load needs to be taken up, the, needs to be taken up uh, based on the euro code, is going to cause a destabilizing moment 606 kilonewton uh, meter. Okay, what about the earthquake? Oh no, and it is going to result... What happened? Oh, this is going to result in eccentricity 0 0.46. I'm going to tell whether this is good for us or, or uh, bad. So what about the earthquake? The earthquake is an effect for rigid bodies which acts in the mass of the centroid and uh, the effect of the earthquake depends on the mass of the structure and the horizontal acceleration. Uh, everyone remembers Newton's second law. So we know the mass of the structure. We know that the Euro code tells us that the 10% of the gravitational acceleration needs to be uh, picked up in Hungary as, as the uh, base acceleration or peak ground acceleration. And based on this, we could tell that the destabilizing moment, the maximum, uh, is 3,350 kilonewton meter. And if you remember, the, the ultimate limit states belonged uh, a destabilizing moment 7,000. So we are pretty good with it as well. And this means uh, over one meter eccentricity. And I'm showing the results now. So about the wind load, we have received uh, almost one half meter eccentricity, which is going to be just outside of the core of the section. This is the point of the acting load. Uh, and this, the shaded area, is the, the compressed, compressed part of the base section. 
So here, some cracks may occur if the structure doesn't have any tensile capacity, and this can happen just based on the elastic stress state of the structure. What happens uh, if we have earthquake? Well, the compressed zone shrinked a lot. Uh, over one half of the structure is, could be under tension, and if we do not have any tensile resistance, this is going to cause cracks, uh, mostly in the, uh, the other part. But still no overturning happens uh, based on elastic stress state. So I'm really happy to announce that uh, this structure is safe, and which was a really important question whether this uh, structure needs a structural reinforcement or not is this, what is going to be the cost of the preservation of this structure? And we can say that, okay, no structural reinforcement is needed, and this is a really uh, important uh, fact. Sure, we need to preserve, preserve the, the surface of the structure that no stones can roll down from it. Okay, and we were really curious whether our method is applicable for other uh, castles or other ruins. So we picked some other walls. This uh, castle Marcos is just really near Matro Derechka. Uh, also, Robert Philip gave us the, um, the point cloud. And we have investigated everything again, which was just changing the input data. So nothing, nothing uh, else was done. So here is the point cloud, and here is the result just from the wind load, which tells us that this amorphous uh, structure is in not that good condition as that huge tower, having an eccentricity shown here, uh, almost, almost half, half meter. And if we would put the compressed zone on it as well, and this would result a uh, huge part of the structure to be under tension. So this is not a really good news, but we can say to the archaeologists that do not go and dig there with caterpillars and everything because this structure is going to fall down. Something needs to be done with it. Okay, and here is the other part. Just again, the, just the input data, so just the uh, point cloud was, was changed and everything went on automatically, and uh, we have received for this slender object, uh, again, some useful uh, results. So, these are the references, and thank you for your attention.